Okay, so here's part two of my interview with Max Lehman with Lone People. Uh, in this part, we talk about how he started Lone People, uh, which is a feat that not many people can do. Um, basically, he started his own mortgage bank, and he talks about where he's been, which has been the number one volume producer in Austin as far as loans uh, for many, many years, and uh, quite proud of what my friends accomplished. And uh, check out part two of this interview, and please subscribe for future videos. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about loan people. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've ever really told the story before, have you? I mean, publicly. Uh, maybe once or twice on stuff that never really got shown. Yeah. So, well, um, there's at least five people going to watch this. <laughs> <That's okay>. Awesome. <laughs> so, and two of them will be me and you. But right. Yeah. Uh, and Dana and Angel. Right. So, right, right. And my right, mom. Right, so right, there you go. There you go. Done. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you go back, I got in the business as a loan officer, uh, July 9th, 2001 was my first day. Yeah. Um, you know, and for me, it just kind of clicked. I, very early on, I was kind of the guy that people started coming to, and, and I just always found I had a knack for putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Like, mm -hmm. How do you make this work? How, and I, I don't know. I just, I was I was always really good at it. So, you know, I was kind of doing my thing, and, and, you know, you start about 10 or so years ago, we really started getting some traction, and I started growing out my team, and, you know, became the number one lender in Texas uh, for the last you know, 10 years, whatever it was, and top 10 in the nation in that same time. Uh, actually, in 2015, we were number one. We were the number one lender in units uh, in the nation. Oh, wow. Uh, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you were with Prime almost that entire time. Yeah, yeah. I was with Prime Lending for uh, 14 years. I started at Sterling Capital Mortgage. Yeah. We moved over to Prime Lending. Uh, I was there for about 14 years. Moved over to New American. Um, both great companies. You know, every there's a lot of good companies out yeah. there. Uh, for me, I've always been more entrepreneurial minded, mm -hmm. um, and you know, some of my disc test profiles would tell you I, I like to question authority. And yeah, I don't want to do things just the way they've always been done, just because. Yeah, sure. You know that kind of thing. I but bet we have very similar profiles. <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, you know, so. I just kind of got to the point where I, I said, you know, if this was my company, I would do it this way mm -hmm. uh, one too many times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so in 2019, I was talking with uh, uh, or rather at the end of 2018, me and my wife started talking and I was like, you know, I just I really just want to do this on our own. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to I want to do this a little bit differently. I want to have a flat level organization. You know, a lot of these big companies have a lot of middle management, which drives up their interest rates and makes them not competitive. Okay, okay, but let me let me put preference this for people that are watching. This is if it's like if you if you put it in terms of like a real estate team that's becoming going to become a real estate broker. It's yeah. but it's not the same. It's extremely more difficult. Talk about that. So what, what are the what do you have? What hurdles do you have to go through? Because for us, we just like pass some fucking test that right. has four more questions than the last test. Yep. <laughs> so so um, yeah. So 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 there's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, most people, when they start up a company, they start up as a broker. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a broker. Uh, a broker is a middleman, right? A mortgage broker. A mortgage broker yeah. is a middleman. Yep. They don't they don't lend their own money. They don't underwrite in-house. They're not selling loans after the fact. They are beholden to wherever it is that they're sending the loan. If they send a loan to this lender and there's a problem in underwriting and they have to switch gears, now they have to go to a different lender. They're subject to rate movement and extending closing and all of that. Yeah. Through my career, I've always been an independent mortgage banker. Okay. Right? So yeah, okay, let's explain. I the like difference. control. Yeah. I want to make sure that that loan is being underwritten in house. Gotcha. I want to make sure that loan is funding and closing in house. So how many what what is the percentage of bankers versus brokers? Oh, I have no idea. Really? I, okay. I don't know. There's there's more bankers out there than brokers. Okay. Um for sure. Um It used to not be that way, right? Uh I don't. I, I don't yeah, know. Okay, I don't yeah. know. Uh, you know, the broker world is just a different. Uh, it's a different model, right? You can be an individual, uh, process your own loans. Okay, do it's kind of like an independent contractor, it, basically. Okay, yeah. Okay. You know, you just you find different banks to sell loans to, to deliver loans to, gotcha. and you you, you see but, where but, am I getting but, the but best very rate? Very little you, control. You have the, no control. Yeah. I mean, you have control over where you send it, but once you start going down the path, you don't really have much control. So when you're a banker. You, you're, you're picking the companies 
when you're when you're working for them, you're picking the ones that have the most control for you, right? Well, so here's how it works, right? As a banker, if you come to loan people mm -hmm. um, to get a loan, we are going to keep that loan in house. So when you fill out the application and you send us your documents, mm -hmm. we're gonna say, okay, here's our interest rate, here's your loan package, send me all of your stuff, we're gonna underwrite it, the underwriters, for the most part, sit in my office. Yeah. Right uh, now, people work from home, which, sure, is, why, yeah, which yeah. is why I say that. But you know, yeah. it's they're they're all employees of loan people. Yeah. Um, so okay, wait, wait. Let's th get, go back and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I want I want no. the flow of it to go from because I think we get that now, right? But what I want I don't want to lose track of, of the story of loan people. Okay? So and I, I I cut you off course. My, my my bad. Yeah. No. 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 So so let's go back. So. Uh, you know, 2018. 2018. I'm talking to my wife. I'm just say one too many times. If this was my company, mm -hmm. I would do things differently. Yeah. Lehman Team had grown at the time to be a 300 million dollar a year team. Yeah. We were doing 300 million dollars a year in volume, a thousand, eleven hundred, twelve hundred units. Like wow. We're big enough to be our own company. Yeah. Right. I decided that I wanted to have a platform where there was no middle management driving mm -hmm. up interest rates, where we could be super, super competitive, but still have quality efficiencies and everything that Lehman Team knew. Okay, so so when you decide to do that, okay, and you make the decision, you know what, I'm gonna do it. So what, what do you do then to research how to do it? Do you get attorneys involved or? Uh, well, so I knew <laughs> some people. So first I started reaching out, my cousin is actually a broker, mm -hmm. uh, and I started trying to figure out, the first thing I knew that I was gonna need was a warehouse line. A warehouse line is a line of credit. Yeah. You know, all these companies, when they fund a loan, whether you know they are a bank or an independent mortgage company, uh, they are pulling money to fund the loan from a line of credit, mm -hmm. right? You fund that loan, uh, once the loan is closed, then you go sell the loan to an aggregator. Got you. So when you're getting a, a line of credit from a bank, I yep. mean, we're, we're obviously talking millions, right? Yeah. And, and so what do you do? You like It's not like filling out a loan application. Well, so no, no. Uh, I mean, you've got to provide everything. Yeah. You know, blood samples and all yeah. of that. So I met, um, I knew a lot of people in the industry and started calling around. Um, and uh, uh, Aaron D, who's our COO, uh, I reached out to her in December of mm -hmm. 2018 and said, "Hey, I, you know, I want to start this company, and you know, you, you've done this before, and and you're really good at this operation." She's side. done this with another bigger company. She's she's helped start companies before. Yeah. She's been on the operations side of okay. companies before. She has a lot of she had a lot of contacts. Like there, yeah. was, there was a lot there. Um, so we spoke. Uh, you know, it took about five months or so for us to come to terms. Yeah. Um, she started, so we officially formed Loan People in 2019. Uh, she got to work with getting our warehouse lines in place. We had to pick our loan origination system, you mm -hmm. know, so I'm testing out every possible system out there. What is the best system out there for Lehman Team? Mm -hmm. Because if it's best, if, if a $300 million team can use this system efficiently, mm -hmm. that's going to help the masses. Yeah. Right? Um, what about our point of sale system? Uh -huh. You're going through all of that stuff. Plus, you're having to figure out who am I going to be able to sell loans to? Yeah, investors, aggregators, right. this kind of thing, right? What is it? Is it when you're when you're talking to people? Is it a little touchy? Like I don't know. Like when you're trying to sell loans to people, like okay, we're like, well, who are you? You know, uh, at the beginning it was yeah. yeah because they didn't know who we were. Yeah, so we really had to show my resume. Yeah, what I have done, what Aaron have done. Here's here's my net worth. Here's our liquidity in the company. Yeah, you know, and I really put it all out there. We don't have any investors. We've not yeah. taken any money. I bootstrapped this whole thing myself. Yeah, uh, really, just put it all out there. Yeah, right. Um, and so, how many people? How many of these get started a year? Not many. Right. I mean, not many. And the, generally, most people will start as a brokerage. Yeah. Then they maybe go down a couple of years. They get one warehouse line. They yeah. start kind of funding stuff themselves. Then maybe they get an underwriter. So they're like a hybrid at first, kind yeah, of. Yeah, kind of. And then you went all in. We went all in yeah. from day one. Okay. Uh, it was the only way to do it. Um, so you fast forward, right? Well, let's back up for a second. The whole idea behind loan people is, again, to not have a lot of fat. If we can be very lean, a flat level organization with like minded mm -hmm. professional technicians, yeah. loan officers, right, that are technicians that understand how to put loans together, that don't want to be bogged down with management, mm -hmm. you know, it's 
if I need you, I'll ask for help. Otherwise, stay out of my way. Yeah. That was always my mentality. Yeah. Um, that's that's who we're looking for. That's who we're built for. Okay. So so what this does for you, besides giving you the control, mm -hmm. okay, it also allows you to go beyond Austin, which I know you're beyond Austin as Lehman team and doing loans, but you could also do like better recruitment. Well, so what we're doing now, like right now we're licensed in several states, Colorado, Oklahoma, Tennessee, New Mexico, Arkansas, uh, Florida, and working on some more. But the platform that allowed Lehman team with our marketing mm -hmm. to become a $300 million team. And then, you know, in, in COVID years, we did 570 and 695. Wow. Um, that is the platform that we're offering to people that want to come on board with us. Yeah. So loan officers in general yeah. are either good at getting business or they're good at working business. Yeah, so it's like real estate agents. But they're not good at both. Right. Right? Um, people have found success building teams where I'll bring in the business you work in. Yeah. Right? Uh, same with us. Uh, my wife, Dana, our CMO, uh, is great at teeing things up and making the phone ring and putting pretty things out in the world that people find useful. Yeah. Uh, and not just, we close your loan on time. Right. Type, type marketing. Right. Right. Um, and our marketing specifically is very hyper locally focused uh, on whatever whatever city it is that we're in. So yeah. you know we do uh, the neighborhood maps of Austin. We now have them in San Antonio. We have them for DFW. We're working on Houston. We're gonna overlay here, with, with, and, and, and I'm just gonna get, we'll put this out there. But like the, I want to as, as your people watching this will see yeah. these overlays. Um, um, you know we're almost done with El Paso and Corpus yeah. Christi. Um, those those types of things, especially the maps, you know, we do uh, uh, localized treats. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've teamed up with a bakery so that we can send out different things to realtors for their birthday and past clients uh, mm -hmm. for their birthdays or anniversaries. You know, if you're in Austin, you get some Austin cool looking stuff. Uh, if you're in Dallas or Fort Worth, you know, it might it, they'll look like Dallas type yeah. things. Um, but it's different and it's things that nobody's doing. Yeah. Uh, specifically with the maps, you know, this is a big deal. Agents can't get enough of them. They're, yeah. they're valuable. They let your clients know where every neighborhood is in town. They they're, look great in a background video. We've had them. I've seen them. A lot of people have them. Yeah. And, you know, and they're useful. They're actually very useful for consumers. Yeah. Right. When someone's moving to Austin, they yeah. don't know where anything is. Yeah. You're able to give them this guide. Well, not just that. You also have the website. Too. Exactly. It's, everything's digital. Yep. There are lots of information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we have all of these tools. Yeah. Uh, from a marketing standpoint, we have all of these tools from a technology standpoint that allow loan officers to move much faster through the process yeah. so that they can do more loans. Yeah. There's less management, so there's more competitive interest rates, yeah. and that's what we're building. So, okay, so doors open when? So we opened January 2020. 2020, okay. Yeah. So... And then yeah, that was just, just loan people. It was loan people. Okay. And then I don't think you even really marketed or even told about uh, loan people until uh, later that year, right? Yeah. Well, so we started, you know, and we kind of, nobody, you know, what's really funny. Uh, when I left uh, Prime Lending and I went to New America, yeah. nobody cared. Nobody cared. It was a big deal to us. Yeah. Nobody cared. Well, that's, you know, by the way, agents are like, oh, they're like, nobody gives a shit. Right. Right. Uh, and then when we left from Prime Lending to New American, again, nobody cared. Yeah. As a matter of fact, a lot of people were like, I thought you already, I thought you owned that business. Yeah, right, like, right. You know, so, so, you know, as loan officers, you kind of get your identity tied to a company and what you realize is, People are doing business with you, yeah. not the company that you're working with. And that's largely true in real estate. Okay, of Now, you don't want to be with a company, I'm not going to say any names, but that, that it just doesn't, is non-reputable or have a reputation of not doing any business. Of course, you know? of course. So, okay, so and you, were, you, you were a little nervous about the, 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 the opti optics of another move. Well, for sure, yeah. right? Um, but again, we opened this thing up. Nobody cared. Yeah. You know, you start a company. Fortunately, Lehman team, 
uh, has a great reputation in town and everybody yeah. knows who we were. And so all people saw was, oh, there's another name behind this. Yeah, right? gotcha. Um, but we were able to now the lone people name is out there and people understand if lone people is on a prequal letter yeah. or if lone people's on something, they know that they're going to get the job done. They know we're going to do uh, a good job for the customers. Yeah. The realtors aren't going to have to worry about, is this going to close on time? Is the customer going to be happy? Okay. So, so, okay. So lone people, uh, Lehman P team, lone people, that's 2020. What point did you say, okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to start recruiting beyond Lehman team. So 2021. Okay. So we started adding additional branches uh, in 2021. We brought our first one on in January. We brought. So when you say a branch, is that an office or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, are you actually buying office space or a rented leasing office space or? Uh, it depends on the branch. You know, we've had we had enough office space to put other groups, other teams. Yeah. At the company. And then sometimes they're joining you, and the team already has. You might get a team that's already that's already got an office. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Or you know, sometimes you have to go find office space. Sure. So so we brought our first uh, branch on in January. Uh, second one in February. Uh, then we brought on another branch in July. Yeah. Um, and then we started expanding into San Antonio. Uh, we brought on a couple people in um, August, September yep. uh, in San Antonio. We had another. And uh, how are you getting these people? Talk, calling. Yeah. You know. You're, you and I had this conversation. Yeah. Years ago. I mean, you know, what do you do? <laughs> you try to find you try to find people on Facebook and LinkedIn. And, yeah. Uh, you know, look at people's reviews and. and do you have you a know? script? Uh, somewhat. Yeah. yeah. It kind of depends on the, the script kind of depends on the medium in yeah. which we're getting, you know, we're finding people. But you know, the other thing is too, I'm not interested in doing like these mass text messages to everybody to try to get people to call. And also we're very, we're not a company for everybody. Yeah. You know, this isn't, you know, we're not... <laughs> We're not a company for everybody. Well, right, because you're doing like I do. Like I seek out the people that I want to to come on. Sure, you know. You know and do we have some sort of common commonality with this person? Mm -hmm. Have I worked with this person before in a previous life? Yeah. Do they know somebody I know? Yeah. Do they know somebody at the company? Right. You know, um, what 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 kind of person are they? What type of loan officer are they? Um, what is their personality like? You know, the, one of the big rules at, at loan people is you have to be nice to work there. Yeah. If you're not nice, I don't care if you're doing a billion dollars a year. You cannot work here. Yeah. This is a very, very tough business. Yeah. It's very, is that, is very that set stressful. on your core values? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. The, we we did we went through EOS and like like just got our our, our, our dissected everything we believe in and yeah. our, our mission statements. We make good agents into great agents. And our core values are be smart, take action, uh, do the right thing, and be all in. Yeah. And so when we look at agents, like, like, you know, and even if we have like an agent that's suffering or an agent that's not doing that well or they're just kind of fucking off, we're like, are are they embodied? Right. Are they smart? Right. Are are they taking action? Right. Are they all in? Right. You know, do the right thing is not it's not as common. Sure. But um, because most people generally do the right thing. So, but you look at that from the same standpoint, right? Yeah. I mean, you've really, you got to fit our culture. Yeah. You, you got to fit our convictions. You know, what we like to say is, uh, you know, our, our acronym is we're flow blow for loan officers by loan officers. Okay. Um, are you a good technician? Mm -hmm. Right. If you're just a loan officer that's throwing a bunch of stuff up against the wall and some of it's going to stick and some of it's not, and you don't really care about your customers, you're only in it for the paycheck. Yeah. We're not for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you're the kind of customer, if you're the kind of loan officer that you're going to be the steward for your borrower, you're not just going to show them one option because that's what's best for you. You're going to show them all of the options that are best for them. Walk them through why is one better than the other. Yeah. What do you think is the best option for their for for whatever their goals are? Are they yeah. going to be in this house a year and then turn it into a rental? Is this their forever home? You know, all of those things come into play. Yeah. Right. And it's not just close a deal, get a paycheck. Yeah. Right. Um, and you know, we have let people go. That were, I use the example. We had an underwriter who was she was our top underwriter. Mm -hmm. uh, underwrote about three times what the second underwriter in the company <laughs> did, but she was not a nice person. Yeah, uh, and so that doesn't work. So you know we had to replace her with two and a half underwriters. Yeah, uh, but I would rather do that than have anybody, than have somebody at the company because it's going to mess up the culture. Of course, so right? And if you get a bunch of crappy loan officers that come in that don't understand how to put deals together, mm -hmm. then they're bogging down the system. And if they're bogging down the system. 
these other loan officers who have loans in underwriting get held up because everybody's working on all these problems for yeah. somebody that didn't know how to put a file together in the first place. Okay. So um, at the end of 2021, mm -hmm. where, where is Loan People? Uh, so when we started, we had about 24 employees, one branch. Uh, you know, now we have at the end of 2021, we've got about 100 and uh, I think at the time it was about 110 uh, 112 employees, wow. something like that. Uh, maybe not quite. No, it was, I was actually, it was, it was like maybe about 90 employees. We're up to about 118 now. Uh -huh. Um, you know, we've got a branch in New Braunfels. And, now and, and well. when you say employees, how many of those are, are loan officers? So ne right. It was about 25. We've got about 30 loan officers now. Wow. Um, you know, between Austin, New Braunfels, San Antonio, Corpus, uh, got some people in, uh, got a person in Oklahoma as well. Okay. So now we're, we're in 23. Yep. Okay. You, what is your what's your vision for the next three years? Our plan, our goal is what we're calling our five by five. We want to get to five billion in origination in five years uh -huh. from 2022. So by 2027, yep. You know, can we get to five billion and be scalable to go more? Okay, right. And, and how do you get there? Well, uh, it starts with making sure our uh, processes uh, are in place that we're efficient, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have processes and procedures yeah. uh, for everything, yeah. um, you know, and, and also you have to be transparent. Mm -hmm. Our biggest thing, and I have sat around a table with a lot of owners and CEOs and executives of mortgage companies, and they tell me that I'm crazy. Uh, we are 100% transparent to our loan officers. What, 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 why are you crazy? Because you're, because you're transparent? Because we're so transparent. Yeah. Um, like open book. Yeah I, yeah. I will show the loan officers the financials. Yeah. I will show them raw pricing so they see how our margins get built. Mm -hmm. um, and Which is a trend in the business. It's a, it's a rising trend in the business world, open book, book financing. Sure. Except what most mortgage companies will say is we're transparent. We're going to show you everything. Yeah. But they don't. You know, one of the terms in our industry is corporate allocation, which is the corporate office needs to take some piece of the pie mm -hmm. to cover corporate expenses because we have to pay things like underwriters and closers and right. funders and we have technology that needs to be paid for. Which right? is could come in a term of a guise for more money grab. Sure. Yeah. So here's what happens. A lot of these companies will put out a rate sheet to a branch mm -hmm. and they'll say, here's here's your here's your raw price. But they've already taken their corporate allocation out of it. They're taking a per file fee from the branch. They're doing all these things that make it appear to be transparent, mm -hmm. but they're not. The way that we do it is we put the full margin to the branch, mm -hmm. uh, and then we take out our corporate allocation so they actually see it on the P&L, on the profit and loss statement, mm -hmm. uh, versus us taking out our piece before it comes to them. So they can see exactly what corporate's making. Yeah. Um, I've been on calls to show people, you know, with the rate volatility now, loan sales aren't great. Yeah. Um, you know, you lock in a rate with a customer 30 days ago at six and a half, and now it's at seven and a half. Yeah. You know, that you, you lose money on when you go to sell that loan, but, and there's a lot of mechanisms in but, there. But got the it. The point is, the point is, I show all of that. Yeah. Uh, including when we sell a loan, the loan officer can go in there and see what, what the company actually sold the loan for. Got you, but okay. So, but, but to the plan, right? Yeah. You're, you're you're outside. You're recruiting outside of Austin, yep. right? You're meeting people at, at conventions, and you're you're just getting your name out there beyond Austin. Correct. Right. Yep. Um. And then are are you when you look at at primarily other cities? In, are you you're sticking to Texas for now? Uh, mostly. You know, we're doing a little bit in Colorado. You know, the problem is. Nobody knows who we are. Right. Right. So people in Texas are more familiar with me as a loan officer. Yeah. Um, so that that's our focus. Plus, we're in Texas. We know Texas. Uh, companies that are based outside of Texas have a lot of problems with Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's a lot of great things about this state. So that, that is our primary focus yeah. for now. Right. And that's why it's really important to go to these conferences. Correct. You know, because you just, I mean, like, I'm going to one... Uh, in November, and I've been going to them for ten years, and it's you know real estate conference is different, obviously, but you know if I had the ability to expand, yeah, like you do, um, then it would be 
much easier for me but simply because I've been doing it for a long time. Sure. You know, and you, just, you, you meet people, you drink them to the bar, you talk to them, you know, you speak in on a, on a panel, you you know, it's, it's so that's that's kind of part of your plan then. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then meeting people through people. Right. You know, that's networking. Yeah. Um, who works for the company now? Everybody, like the one thing that I love about the group of people that we have, mm -hmm. when I'm talking to somebody that wants to come on and they're interested, I can just tell them, look at our directory yeah. and call any loan officer here. Yeah. I don't care who you call. I do the same thing, by yeah. the way, when I recruit. Go to yeah. the agent roster page and call whoever you want. Yeah. And Ask them. Yeah. You know, there's, that's a bold statement. It is. Right. And, and, and I'm like, and I'm I'm completely comfortable with it. Yeah, but I don't think you, you, not everyone can be. No, you can't. But that also comes back to what are you? What kind of culture are you developing? Yeah. What is your relationship with your staff? Are you are you in it with them? Yeah. Right. And and, and I think it would it would I would challenge people to say that if you make that statement to someone and you start thinking about oh wait. What if they call this person? You're right. Maybe that person doesn't need to be there. Right. You know? Or maybe you've done something to that person that you need to look inward and say, what have I done wrong here? Right. Right? Yep. Uh, maybe it's not that person's fault. Absolutely. But either way, you're 100% right. If you can't make that statement confidently, yeah. then you're, you you got to change then something you, you got, then, about there, what you're doing. There's a hole in your process. A lot of these, A lot of people look at wanting their company to have as many employees as possible. Yeah. Right? That's not that's not what I'm about. Yeah. Right. I want a tight knit group of like minded people that are all in it together. Yeah. You know, can we bounce ideas off each other? Hey, how would you do this? Hey, yeah. I did that. And I'm in there with them. You know, that's yeah. that's that's one thing that a lot of these other companies don't have. You know, they're run by people who have either never originated or haven't originated in twenty and thirty years. Yeah. Don't understand how to put a loan together and definitely don't understand what it's like to be a loan officer dealing with the environment that we've been dealing with for the yeah. last three or four years, yeah. you know, it's not easy. No, um, And I think a lot of that gets lost on a lot of these old executives that have just been doing it the same way because it's how it's always been right. done. Um, you know, and, and again, I, I was able to build something where clearly I'm really good at my craft, Yeah, uh, you know, to be number one for so long. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm here to help those people as well, which yeah. comes a long way. I know you do that for your agents as well. Yeah. You know, and, and, and for us, it's a strong leadership team. Yep. You know, uh, I always say this is not the Ryan Rodenbeck show. Um, and, and that really shows with, with, you know, our, our leadership. Here, yeah, so. absolutely. Um, you know, and that, that's the other thing. I think you and I are both really good at putting together people to make us better. Right. Cause you know, finding people that are smarter than you and me. Really there's isn't that hard. No, no, there's plenty of them out there. Uh, you know, um, even just our operations staff, right? Yeah. I've heard the comments several times from other loan officers that have joined. They're like, wow, I've never seen an uh, operations leader and an underwriter work so hard to get a loan closed. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and so that's just, that's that's what we're trying to do. Okay. So I want to wrap this up. I want to thank you so much for, for giving us so much time. I think this is the longest podcast I've ever had. It's been very fluid, very great. Probably break it up into two different parts here. But for someone that's watching this and they want to know more about you or your company, where's the best place for them to go? Uh, so you can email me directly, uh, directly max.lehman at loanpeople.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also email careers at loanpeople.com. Uh, you can give me a call at 512 617-5636. That's my direct office line. Uh, I'm happy to talk to anybody anytime. Um, and uh, yeah, we can have a confidential conversation to see uh, see if there's anything there for, for both of us. Awesome, dude. Thanks, man. High five. <laughs>